God has many names. Jehovah, Yahweh, I Am, Wonderful, Counselor, the Almighty, and many others. But one name of God which should be familiar to us is Providence. It is God's name which describes his role as a provider. It's one of God's names which is interwoven in our history. The doctrine of Providence in Puritan tradition was centered around surrendering to God's will and is also mentioned in the Declaration of Independence. It's fitting that on this weekend, just a few days away from America's 247th birthday, we need to think on how God's providence has been the driving and sustaining factor in our country for all of these years. In these days, our nation continues to have the spirit of self-centeredness. Unlike before, the reliance on God has been replaced by personal effort, and our successes are credited solely to our own abilities. But what is absent is that spirit of gratitude towards our Creator. I still believe that a majority of our country still believes in God. But as Romans 1.12 states, Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. As I continued to ponder God's many names and man's continued lack of acknowledgement and gratitude to God, I was brought back to providence. I was surprised to find that this name of God is not mentioned in the Bible. The concept and the fact that God provides is undoubtedly a core element of the Bible, but this particular name of God was not mentioned. As I thought more about God's names, the first name that I went to as I thought about God's provision, was Jehovah Jireh. The name Jehovah Jireh appears only once in Scripture, in Genesis 22:14. It is mentioned at the end of Abraham's testing on Mount Moriah, where he was asked by God to sacrifice Isaac. Because of his faith, God sent an angel to stay Abraham's hand and provided a ram to be the sacrifice instead. Jehovah Jireh is not a name of God, but rather a place where God provides. Day by day, God is always providing. He makes the sun come up, the rain fall, the winds to blow in either tempest or soothing breeze. What has caused us to drift from this state? First, we lack humility. In his letter to Timothy, Paul describes that the depravity of man in the last days and in this long description of man's wickedness, he starts off in 2 Timothy 3.2, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, and unholy. It is no surprise that in this list of sins, in this passage, self-love is what leads things off. Greek mythology tells of a man by the name of Narcissus. Narcissus was somebody who was blessed with such great beauty that when he saw his own reflection in a pool of water, he lost the will to live and eventually died. It is through Narcissus' experiences that we have the word narcissism or an admiration of oneself and one's physical appearance. When we go back to Abraham's story, he could have easily named the place Faithful Abraham or Great Abraham. He could have been, as we are sometimes, narcissistic and glorify himself for the great faith and the great triumph he's exercised. But he didn't. He did just as Jesus said in Matthew twenty-three twelve: He that shall humble himself shall be exalted. What was the end result? When the writer of Hebrews gives a list of great heroes of the faith. You have Abraham right there in a great position, showing that he's not only one of the great men of faith, but also of humility. He also failed to understand the consequences of our pride. We know that in the Bible, it says in Proverbs sixteen eighteen, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. 
Jesus also said again in Matthew 23, 12, Whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. The word abased is defined as reduced to a low state, humbled, and degraded, meaning that anyone who lifts himself up will eventually be brought down to a lower state. The original fall of man is the best example of how our pride abases us. We were this sinless and perfect creation. And through the, our pride to be greater than who God is or just as equal as God, we received the sin nature and became tainted. The only reason that why we are able to triumph in anything is through God's grace. The abilities that we have received, that also comes from God. The strength to go on, that comes from God. The air that we breathe to do the things that we do, that also comes from God. At this point in time where Abraham comes to this realization to call this place Jehovah Jireh, he was undoubtedly older. And one could argue that he was already at the tail end of his life. This moment of naming Jehovah Jireh was perhaps not just a result of one act of God's, of really realizing that God had provided, but of many across the decades. Abraham gives glory to God immediately. Sadly, the Bible also gives many examples of prideful persons. Saul, David, the one that we probably forget is Moses. Now Moses is regarded as one of the greatest leaders and prophets ever. But because of his pride, the dream, the goal of the promised land was something that he never entered into, but could only see. God had given him a command to just speak to the rock so that it would give, bring forth water for the Israelites. But instead, in his anger and his pride and his, this desire to lift himself up, he strikes the rock to give water to the Israelites. This is another great warning of the consequences of lifting ourselves up. Of course, there's nothing that we can take away from how great Moses is. But the fact that he was not allowed to enter into the promised land was one of those great consequences of our pride. We're going to end here for today in terms of the different things that keeps us away from this great place of Jehovah Jireh. But I hope that this is something that will be a help to you, to help you realize and help you understand that there is someone that is bigger than all of us. I just sang last week a song that Elvis Presley had sung called Somebody Bigger Than You and I. See, we always like to think ourselves as the biggest thing and the best thing, when in fact, there is somebody that is bigger than all of us, and that is Almighty God. He already knows the past. He already knows the future. And he can also be the person that guides you through the present. The lack of humility in this day and age is what's preventing us from being thankful. And having an unthankful heart makes us think that we are much greater than what we really are. God has a grace that is extended to us in great, great volumes. The patience that he exercises and the love that he exercises in spite of us should be something that should humble us. Think of it that he who the Bible says can hold all the waters in the small of his hand and that the universe is in the span of his hand is somebody that is in our corner. Somebody that is constantly providing for us. And sadly, somebody that we fail to give gratitude to. We as not just Christians, but human beings need to come to this place of humility once again. To be able to understand that God is the provider and that God knows better than what we know. Once we reach that state of thankfulness and gratitude, I am sure that there will be a change in our heart and in our lives. We'll show that we are not, we can't do this alone. And that we need to rely on God to get us through the most difficult of situations. And when we get there, we see God in a greater and grander light. 
And not only do we see him in this perspective, but then we also know that in our deepest and darkest and most difficult struggles, he is right there with us. That's all for today on the PB and Cashew Show. I'm PB, and as we say every single week, we don't know you, but we love you, and there's a God above that does.